You guys got them all? Or are you studying? You're studying? Okay, sorry, I was being overly optimistic. Are you giving up? We got all the boards. Those four? Yeah. Everybody done? Figure you're as close as you're going to get? Probably. All right. Just so it doesn't drive you crazy, let me show you the answers. Um, let's see. I'm going to put them up twice, two pages. So here's the first one. What were you like two when people were playing Atari, or was it even before that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let me flip down the second one. You guys ready for me to flip? Okay, so here's the second one. So it is MasterCard, but they've like updated their logo. All right, so let's talk for just a minute. What we're talking about today is personal branding. So we're going to take these concepts about brands and we're going to apply them to people. But let's first talk about brands and logos. To me, there are three different things that a logo or a brand will do. The first thing is just identity. Do you know what that logo represents? What are some of the things that factor into whether or not you know a logo or a brand? What makes you recognize one and not another? Popularity? Different colors and shapes. Different colors and shapes. Things that stand out to you about it that help you to recall that that specific logo is the one that it is. How often you see it. Yeah, repetitiveness, how often you see it. Okay, so the first thing about branding is simply identity. Do you recognize the brand? The second thing about brand is character. And when I talk about character of brands, I'm really kind of talking about the emotional reaction or kind of the temperature check that people have when they see a brand. Okay, we're going to look at a couple in just a minute to compare those two things. Okay. The third is quality. Not what your emotional reaction to the brand is, but really when you think about the product that that brand represents, is it good quality or bad quality? Okay? It's kind of like if you're looking at a Lexus as compared to a, you know, a, I don't know, Kia or a, you know, something else. Take luxury versus one that's, you know, it used to be the Yugo, you know, when I was young. But anyway, whatever the really tin can kind of car is today compared to a high-end luxury vehicle. So what you know about the actual product beyond the brand. But the brand probably makes you think about that product quality, right? I mean, when you see a brand that's for Cadillac or Lexus or something like that, you kind of almost immediately think luxury, quality, that type of thing. Okay. All right, so here's two, talking about that, that character thing or that emotional response. When you look at Burger King, do you think healthy? What are some of the things you think when you see Burger King? Yummy, yeah, tastes really, really good. Greasy, uh-huh. What about the other, Subway? Vegetables, eating fresh, kind of healthy, that kind of thing, okay? So you can see how two different logos kind of invoke not just a little bit about their product, but really kind of that emotional or that, care, what I, again, what I call character of the logo or the product, okay? All right, now how does this relate? We're going to take those concepts and look at it from a personal perspective. We've spent a lot of time talking about resumes and the way that you're going to market yourself with this piece of paper or this document. But the other part of finding a job and staying employed has to do with personal branding and what you, when you're presenting yourself rather than a piece of paper, what personal brand you're exuding to the people that you're speaking to. Okay? So the first thing we talk about when we talk about personal brand is identity. Okay. When we were looking at the little logo slips of paper, you said one of the things about 
recognizing them is repetitiveness. How often you see it, hear about it, things like that. So when I talk about identity as it relates to personal brand, what do you think it means? Do people know you? Do people recognize you? When you walk into the room, do they know who you are? Do they have a feel for a little bit about what you do? How do you influence that? Yes. You show up. Yeah, that's a good way. You show up. The idea is for in today's culture, especially professionally, you'll hear it over and over and over again. Network, 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 network. It's all about who you know. It's all about who you know. That is incredibly true. Okay? So when we talk about identity as it relates to personal brand, part of what's important is simply that people know you. So that you're getting active, for example, with campus activities. If somebody stops a professor and says, hey, I got an application from a kid that is just getting ready to graduate from Oklahoma Wesleyan, and the name, the name was so-and-so, and boom, is that professor going, oh, yeah, I know them. They're on our soccer team. Or, oh, yeah, I know them. I had them in class a couple years ago. There are things that you can do to help increase your identity factor like showing up, showing up to class, participating in class, participating in activities, being involved in service activities around campus, all those different kinds of things, okay? It's just like logos that you're familiar with when you're looking at the little slips of tiles. Same thing when you're talking about personal identity. Do people actually know you? The second thing that we talk about when it comes to personal identity, just like other brands, is character. This has to do with what's the emotional response that people have when they look at you kind of thing. When it's just that fast, not really diving into a whole lot about what you offer, what your degree is, what kind of classes you've had, your skill set, things like that. But really, what's people's kind of emotional reaction to you? Okay. I would submit that part of what goes into that is the demeanor that you give to others, how you come across to other people. Are you guarded? Are you friendly? Are you outgoing? Are you nervous? Are you quiet? Are you difficult? All of those different kinds of things that start to form this kind of character picture to other people. All right? We're going to talk a little bit more about how all those kinds of things factor into personal brand. And then the third thing is quality. And when we talked about the resume the last couple days, quality is some of the details that you're probably going to get into when you look at your resume and write your resume. It really does tie into things about what the product really has to offer. Once you get past the logo, when you get past some of that emotional first response to it, how good is the Burger King Whopper? How good is the Cadillac? Really, when you're talking about product, how good is the substance behind this image that's been created? Okay. So when we, you're applying that personally to personal image, the question is, how skilled are you? What really have you learned to do? What kind of qualities, characteristics, abilities would you bring to the job if we hired you? Okay. So the first two things really have to do with some of those instant reactions that you'll get from people. When they first see your name, when they first see your face, what are just some of those instant reactions? And then the third thing of quality is once somebody dives a little bit deeper, what do you have to offer? Okay. And again, that third thing is a lot of what you're capturing in your resume. Okay. All right. So in terms of what forms this personal brand, I'm going to suggest that we look at five different things. And I'll, let's, I'm going to pass you out a piece of paper so that you've got some of these things handy. Would you do me a favor and pass these out? Thanks. So the first thing is demeanor. When I'm talking about demeanor, again, I'm talking about how you interact with other people. Demeanor, demeanor is kind of another word for behavior, just general behavior. Okay? Your demeanor might be, again, how you come across to people. Are you friendly? Do you smile a lot? Do you, do you put people at ease? Do you make people uncomfortable? Are you nervous? Are you guarded? Are you temper? You know, are you quick to react? Are you positive? Are you negative? When people are interacting with you, what is the tone that you set for that interaction? How do you contribute to the interaction that's happening? That's demeanor. Okay. The second thing is role. Thank you. 
What do you think I need, mean by roll? Any ideas? Yes, go for it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I mean. He said, you know, is that the leader person? Is it the person that would rather just sit back and kind of take a back seat? It's kind of that. It is talking about what role, what part you play in getting the job done, whatever the job is. Maybe the job's just hanging out for the afternoon. Maybe the job is a project that needs to be completed. Whatever the job is that this potential employer is picturing you doing, what is the role that you would fulfill in that? And what's the role that you tend to fulfill in other jobs or tasks that you've been assigned? Okay. Now you mentioned leadership versus backseat or kind of behind the scenes person. One thing that's important to remember when you talk about role is that there is, there is no one role that's more valuable necessarily than another. Okay? And when we talk about personal branding, I don't want you to have the impression that you have to be something that you're not. Okay? This is not talking about um, creating this image that isn't who you really are. Just like on a resume, you don't want to paint a picture that's not really a true you. You don't lie on your resume okay? because you want it to be a true reflection of who you are. Same concept with personal branding. So let's say you are that behind the scenes person instead of the person that tends to be the leader and take charge and things like that. That's okay. We need behind the scenes people that are just trucking along, getting things done, the steady eddies that we know we can depend on. The question is whether or not you fulfill that role with excellence. So if you're the person that is the leader, are you doing that in an excellent way? Are you building camaraderie with your team? Are you taking your team in a good direction? Are you encouraging people? Are you showing gratitude for the work that's being done? All those kinds of skills and qualities that we talk about when we think about a good leader. If you're a behind the scenes person and you're the one that's just trucking away getting things done, are you dependable? Can we depend on you and are you reliable to get done what you said you're going to do? If we see you quietly working behind the scenes, do we think, man, that's because she's over there, man, the smoke is coming out because she's getting it done. Or, boy, I wonder if she forgot that that was due. I wonder if she's really working on that or is she doing something else? See the difference? The role is the same, but the perception that I have about how well you fulfill that role is what comes into play when I think about personal branding. Okay? So the concept of role is figure out what you are really good at and do that with excellence. Okay? Yes? I thought of an example that, like, if you think of, uh, if uh, Subway was a brand new brand, they said all those things, you wouldn't necessarily trust that they were going to do what they do. You'd be going to test it out. You might That's right. even go in. Mm -hmm. You might go to somewhere else that you know you're not. You're going to pay the money you're going to get. You know what you're going to get. You know uh -huh. what you're going to get Burger King, you might not know. So that's the same thing people do with people. Mm -hmm. Until you've kind of gained their trust and they see that it's your brand, mm -hmm. not just your facade. Yeah, you've proven yourself a bit. Uh huh. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's why the idea of creating your role and making sure your identity is known is important regardless of what stage you're in. Because in this stage of your life, when you're here studying, you are potentially making the, that known, your role, your excellence, what you have to contribute. You're making it known to folks like your professors, your coaches, folks you deal with with student life, all that kind of stuff. Okay? You never know who the next stage of life from that stage of life might come back to this stage of life and say, hey, do you know this person? The first job that I interviewed for and got when I was out of college, a professional position, which was exactly the job I wanted, the potential employer there called one of my professors. Happened to be a professor from a 7.30 a.m. class that was absolutely dreaded by me. I hated that class and it was so early in the morning I thought I was going to die every time my alarm clock went off. But I went to class. Well, that was the main question that my potential supervisor had for the person because I was an unknown. Can she show up? Will she show up? Luckily, I fulfilled the role that I needed to at the time that I was a student in that class so that the person who knew me could get that message across to the person that didn't yet know me. Okay. So again, you never know who's going to know that role and be able to kind of to, um, state your case for you. Okay. All right, next thing is dress. This one gets to be really, really challenging. Because how do professional people dress? 
from your perspective? What words would you use to describe nice, neat, expensive? What are some of the other adjectives that you would use? Sharp. You guys are all so nice about it. I figured you'd be like boring, old, stuffy, matronly, that kind of thing. Fashionable. Fashionable. Yeah. Well, that's good. Cool. That's really good. I'm hoping that you'll have a good attitude about professional dress because I'm here to tell you, as I'm sure others have told you too, and you probably already know, what you get by with wearing while you're here on a college campus is nowhere close to what you have to wear when you're getting out in the professional world. <laughs> One of the things that you have to keep in mind in terms of personal image is that whether we like it or not, we as a people make first impression determinations. When we first look at somebody, that is going to factor in to what we perceive about the person. So if a person is poorly dressed, that is going to immediately factor in to my impression of them. Have you all talked about that when you talk about your circle stuff? I was going to use that as an example. I did a little uh, personal research at the courtroom the other day. And uh, when they come to the city courtroom, you, you go and you take a number. It, it's not very, it's not like you think of a regular court. You go and take a number like you're, you're called. <laughs> at Baskin Robbins or something, yeah. <laughs> but people, I watch how they dress. And I mean, there's people coming in there with their underwear hanging out. Uh -huh. I mean, and just, and, and they use the language of, of what I'd say is a language of poverty, the language of the vernacular. Uh, we have words for that from Hilton Bridges. What is it? The uh, uh, common language. It's the common language that you and I might use when we're alone. Mm -hmm. We're just talking, mm -hmm. just, just talking about the day. You know? mm -hmm. Casual. Casual. That's it. You got it. Good. See, mm -hmm. they do this. Uh, and so, so that it was almost shocking because. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't. I didn't go in there all dressed to the nines, but I made sure. That Your underwear didn't show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're ready to look for a job, I would strongly encourage you to invest in some clothes. It doesn't have to be expensive. It may feel like it needs to be expensive, but there are some very inexpensive ways to get professional clothes. Guys, buy a couple pair of dress slacks, buy a couple dress shirts, buy a tie and a suit jacket, okay? Ladies, slacks, nice jackets, same kind of idea. Ladies have it a little bit harder and a little bit easier. It's like a plus and a minus. We tend to be able to have a little bit more flexibility or range in terms of what we can wear and still come across as professional. The flip side of that is it's really hard to know what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. So it gets a little bit stickier. Guys, you know, if you show up in a pair of slacks and a tucked in shirt, you're probably good for business environment in most places now because they're business casual, you know. You know if it's a professional dress and not business casual, you put on a suit and a tie, right? It's kind of a given, you know that. It's not quite so easy with ladies. But it is important that you get it done. So when you get close to it, be sure that you appreciate that dress is going to factor into your personal image. Okay? You cannot, cannot, cannot set that aside and say, ah, it doesn't matter. No, they'll get past it. I'm here to show my qualifications. Because guess what? We are shallow people and we don't get past it. It's just how we are in our society. Okay? So be sure that you recognize the importance of dress. Okay, the next thing as it relates to personal image is communication, okay? Communication is twofold. It's how we verbally communicate, and I know you guys, again, have talked a lot about that as it relates to circles. The other thing is written communication. We're going to look at a couple of examples of that. Just be sure that when you're interacting with people, you're communicating in a very polished and professional way. When you're verbally speaking with someone, even things, and this is partly demeanor too, but your ability to speak up, your ability to have good eye contact, things like a good handshake, all of those kinds of things, those nonverbal communication components are important to the image that you're relaying to the person that you're interacting with. Okay? All right, the last thing is promotional skills. Promoting yourself is a bit of a balancing act. You want to be sure that when you are promoting yourself, telling other people, let's say a potential employer, about what you have to offer, that you are doing that delicate balance between taking credit for what you can achieve and, and demonstrating and communicating what it is you have to offer, 
balanced with humility so that you don't come across as an arrogant jerk. Okay? It's very, very hard to do. <laughs> you don't want to undercredit yourself. You don't want to make it sound like you haven't achieved anything, but you also don't want to act like you got where you are with nobody else's help and you could do more than what you actually can do. Okay? So when you're talking about promoting yourself and this concept of promotional skills, practice a little bit. Okay? Think about, first of all, who's been involved in the process with you, um, what role you've played, how others have helped you, and what you've been able to contribute. Some of those different kinds of things. On the piece of paper that I passed out to you, down at the bottom where it says design your ideal brand, start with who you are. This is a good little exercise that ties into that promotional skills. It prompts you to think through some of those questions about what you have to offer. Okay? I think this can help you in terms of resume building, but it can also help you in terms of some of these questions about just what image am I projecting to others. Okay? So hopefully that will be a good resource for you. All right, so first question or one of the things I want to revisit a little bit is does dress really matter? That's the first picture. Do you all recognize the movie? Pretty Woman. How many of you all have seen that? I know it's getting kind of old now. OK. It's almost a classic. There's the second picture. Same woman, same movie. What image does this give you? Ooh. Yeah. It's yucky, right? Do you assume she's smart or not smart? Not smart. Is she successful? Is she rich? Is she educated? We assume all those things. Okay, what about here? Rich, successful, educated? We, you can't assume education from a picture. That's an interesting idea. Bingo. You can't assume education from a picture because it's an incorrect, potentially an incorrect assumption. And that's where I go back to say, whether we like it or not, we are shallow people and we make judgments immediately based on how someone looks. And so when I see someone who looks to be affluent, they're wearing a nice outfit, they, their look is all kind of put together, my assumption is, they have more money, They're, they tend to be more affluent and more wealthy, they probably are more educated, they probably have an ability to communicate a little bit more effectively. All of those kinds of things. It may be wrong. I mean, the fact of the matter is, in this movie, had she gotten more educated by the time she wore this dress? Had she changed her profession? <laughs> had she changed really anything about her other than her outward appearance at this stage? No. But the fact of the matter is, and it is likely very wrong that we do it, but it is a fact that we do it, okay? So again, you have to factor in the significance of how you look when you're talking about image. So what I hear you saying is that you're stacking the deck for the probability that you'll get the right impression. There you go. It's a good way to look at it, yeah. Stacking the deck to get the reaction you want. And you know, bottom line, you can look at all this stuff and say, I'm not going to do it. I don't care. That's not my attitude and I'm not going to live that way. And that's okay. Just don't be surprised because by making that decision, you are deciding on the image that you're going to project. You're not going to change how other people react to you. You're just going to decide how it is you're going to create your image. Okay? All right. Let's look back at a couple examples about communication and this is focused on written communication. There's the first email. Can you all read that? Don't forget meeting today with today misspelled at three, smiley face, smiley face. Now, picture this in a professional environment. This isn't just between friends of, hey, we're going to meet for dinner or whatever. This is a professional email. Okay? And compare it to this one. Good morning, team. I'm looking forward to our meeting this afternoon at 3 p.m. in the conference room. Okay, let me ask you a question. How much longer do you think this took me to write than that? 30 seconds, 20 seconds, yeah, not that long. Bottom line is, it was not very long. So when I'm talking about the image that I'm going to project 
and I'm focused on communication and factor this in. I'm not talking about a whole bunch of time. This isn't time, this is simply a little bit more effort. This is recognizing that the way that I communicate with other people indeed contributes to the image that I project to others. When you go to these companies about their brands and you talk to Target, for example, or even more close to home, ConocoPhillips, they guard their brand because they know that they always need to protect their brand. They always want to be sure that when their brand is, using, it, it is used, it's relaying the image that they're going for. When I worked at the credit union here in town, we served the employees of ConocoPhillips. We were allowed to use their brand after we got about five different approvals on however it was we were going to use it. If it was going to go on a pen, if it was going to go on a magnet to go on the refrigerator, if it was going to go on a little bracelet thing to go out, they had to approve the product, they had to approve the size of the brand, they had to approve the words that were going next to the brand. They're very, very guarded about their brand. When it comes to personal image, personal branding, you got to be that guarded, okay? So always, always, always ask yourself when you're communicating, when you're dressing, when you're interacting with other people, is this the brand, is this the image that I want to project, okay? You can never be off, really. Doesn't mean we can't have a bad day here or there, but we have to recognize that it does contribute to the image that we're giving. So let's talk a little bit about some roadblocks. Talking again about demeanor, what are some of the things, and remember, demeanor, any ideas what demeanor is again? Do you remember? What's demeanor? I'm so impressed. <laughs> hmm? Somebody's intention. How you carry yourself, how you interact with people, yeah. Demeanor is really talking about behavior. How it is I just act when I'm around other people, okay? So what are some of the roadblocks to me setting or presenting a positive professional demeanor? Just think about reality now, okay? What's that, Facebook? Yeah. Why would Facebook be potentially a struggle for demeanor or image? Yeah, stuff you put on it, because it's easy to put on there. It's kind of informal, and you think, ah, it's just my friends that are going to see this. So it's kind of easy to put your guard down, right? You don't, you're doing it fast. That's another thing about social media. So you do typos. You put words on there that aren't really the right word to use. You pictures that maybe aren't appropriate, all those different things, because it's easy and informal. And you put your guard down, okay? What are some of the other roadblocks just to demeanor and how it is you interact with other people? Yeah. Being shy. Being shy. Some of it is just personality. Okay? And again, I'm not suggesting that you be someone you're not. Just be who you are with excellence. So if you're shy and you're somebody that tends to not come, want to come into the room and very extrovert kind of get to know everybody, quietly pick a person or two to get to know. Okay? Doesn't mean that you can't use who you are in a really, really cool way. Okay? But don't allow that to be your excuse to not do anything. Figure out who you, who you are, what your best skills are, and then apply those skills and those characteristics with excellence. Okay? Another thing about demeanor is just some of the life stuff. When you're stressed, you got six tests coming up on next, you know, next Monday. You're tired, you didn't get a good night's sleep. You just had a fight with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your dad or your mom or your roommate or whatever. All of that kind of life stuff starts to factor in to how it is we interact with other people, okay? The fact of the matter is that kind of stuff happens and none of us are ever gonna be at our best 100% of the time. What I'm suggesting is just that you remember that the way that you interact with other people is gonna impact the image that you have. Let's say, let's say that you go into mm, Target. Target has a pretty good image, right? You know, you go into their stores, they're usually clean, can find some kind of cool stuff, prices aren't too bad, people are kind of friendly. What if you go to, into a Target one day and the cashier, I mean, he's just a jerk. He's just a jerk. What impact does that have on you about Target? Is it a huge impact? No, not really. 
Yeah. I mean, one guy being a jerk of a cashier at Target is probably not going to make you say, I'm never going to Target again. They got the worst employees. But if you go in there two, three, four, five times, and every time you go, you get a different cashier, and every single one of them's a jerk. Now you're Kmart. <laughs> now you start to think, man, I'm, I'm not going to Target anymore. You know, they're always so rude in there. Every time I go in there, they're rude. Or the floor's dirty. Every time I go in there, there's junk all over the floor. And Yeah. Just like how I, sometimes at Audi's, they don't have enough of the registers open. Yeah. And you're thinking like, man, they're so slow. They're so slow, yeah, yeah. So all those kinds of things. So my point with that is to say that when we talk about demeanor or when we, where we talk about dress or communication or any of these different things that factor into personal image, you can have a bad day. And I think we as humans recognize people have a bad day. Maybe she was stressed. Maybe he just got in a fight with his girlfriend. Whatever it is, a one-time thing or an occasional thing isn't going to wreck your image. Just like one really bad cashier is not going to make Target tank. Okay? But if you do it repetitively, where people see you coming and they're like, oh man, the last few times I've seen him, he's just been in such a lousy mood, and hey, I'm going to walk the other way, or man, he's starting to really get to have an attitude. Or When it's repetitive and you see it more than one time, that's when your image starts to really get tanked. Okay? That's when you start to hurt your image. So it's okay to have a bad day and to mess it up every once in a while. Just be sure that, generally speaking, you are projecting the image that you want. Okay? And start to discipline yourself in a way that makes you stop before some of that bad stuff comes out. Before you put on that really inappropriate outfit because you're tired and you forgot to do the laundry. Or before you shoot the email really, really fast because I want to remind him about the 3 o'clock meeting, but man, I'm supposed to meet my friend at lunch. I've got to go, got to go, got to go. And then I send one out with typos and smiley faces and stuff that's inappropriate. Okay? Just, it's, part of that is just discipline and taking care, just like some place like ConocoPhillips does. They don't use their brand without thinking it through so that they're sure they can be consistent. Same kind of idea. Okay? All right. We talked a little bit about role and some of the roadblocks when it comes to roles. Professor View said something about being shy. And again, I want to emphasize over and over again, this is not about being somebody that you're not. This is about being who you are with excellence, okay? But when it comes to roles, some of the roadblocks might be that you get assigned a role that you're not really well suited for. Maybe you're asked to be the leader and you are the shy person, okay? The thing about role in terms of roadblocks is just to be sure that when you look at what it is you're asked to do, take a step back and really ask yourself, how can I do this well with what I have to work with, okay? It's just like a carpenter who's got a box, a toolbox full of tools. Sometimes he doesn't have the perfect screwdriver. And he, he figures out a way to make it work. Okay? Sometimes it takes a little bit more thought or a little bit more effort. But you can overcome that roadblock. Okay? The other thing with role, remember what we talked about is um, the role that you take on helps to solidify your identity. People know you better. They know, oh yeah, she's the one that's always willing to volunteer. Oh, yeah, she's the one that um, volunteers to be in charge of a couple different projects. She's willing, man, if we ask her, I know she'll just take this and run with it. You know, some of those different kinds of identity things that you get tied in to your image based on the role that you're willing to fill. So remember when you have opportunities to fill different roles, to go ahead and step up and take advantage of those opportunities, okay? It'll help you develop your skills. It'll help you get better known all of the things that contributes to your future success, okay? All right, roadblock with dress, we talked about a little bit. Number one, it might be a style that you don't really like. Maybe you wish you could be a little bit more trendy than what your employer allows you to be. Maybe you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, those kinds of things. Um, my biggest thing with dress is just to, again, reinforce that it's important. And you can blow it off if you want to, but you need to do that knowing it has an impact on your image. Okay? All right. Communication. Roadblocks to communication. Any ideas? What might make your communication not be as good as you want it to be? And we talked a little bit about Facebook. What else might keep your communication from being the best that you want it to be? 
Mumbling? Yeah. Uh huh. Good. So how you're actually speaking out to the person that you're talking with. What else? Vocabulary. Vocabulary. Mm -hmm. What words you're able to use? Grammar. What words? Uh -huh. Grammar, both spoken and in emails, written communication. We talked a little bit about that with your resumes and how important it is with cover letters and resumes both to be sure that your grammar is correct, your spelling is correct, things like that. Spell check is not always your friend. I was at a board meeting one time when I worked at a financial institution and one of the things that had to go to the board was any loan that was going to be made to a board member. Okay? The employees could not approve board member's loan, it had to go to the full board. So this board member, his name was Bob and his wife Virginia were trying to buy a home. And so their application, it's just a summary of their application, was presented to the board. Our chief lending officer, head guy in charge of lending, was the one that has to submit these proposals to the board. So Bob and Virginia have applied for their loan. But good old spell check, can you imagine what spell check did to Bob and Virginia? Bob and his virgin wanted to get a loan. So here we are sitting in this board meeting and this chief lending officer has to look down and the first line on the proposal for this loan application is the, the guy who's sitting right there and his wife's name has been changed. So just remember, spell check is not always your friend. It can be a good tool, but sometimes it'll mess you up. So that's a good roadblock when you think about communication. There's nothing like a true set of eyes looking at it, okay? I want to get back to this idea of vocabulary because that's another good one. Practice different vocabulary words. Force yourself to get out of your box a little bit in terms of the words that you're used to using. It is very, very easy to kind of get into whatever's comfortable. What was the term you used with Bridges Out of Poverty? Common language? Casual. Casual, okay. Okay, so things that are just kind of comfy for you. Okay, when you get out into the real world, you'll want to be sure you know what the words mean. If it's a word you don't know, don't use it until you know, but find out what it is. Okay.